September. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the FanDuel TV studios here in Los Angeles. I'm Christina Blacker, joined by the Sarge, Nick Hines. As per usual, this is Wire to Wire, the show all about your stable, the My Racehorse Stable. Sarge, it's been a summer to remember, a lot of winners, but it's time now to transition into fall championship season. Yeah, it certainly has. It's amazing uh, when you're having fun. They say time travels fast, and we've certainly gone wire to wire from tip to tail this summer, but uh, it, it's nice to have the element of winning in different places, not just in one particular spot, but uh, it's a uh, concerted effort, of course, with the support of the partners and uh, a tremendous management team, and of course, our trainer and all horsemen alike. All across the country, all across the globe, really, with my racehorse. Hopefully, you've had a chance to keep up with those runners, with the edge runners as well. Let's start by celebrating some of those victories one more time. I know when you win a race, at least I do, I like to watch the replay over oh, and over again. So we're going to kick it off with Provocateur, who is able to pick up a big victory and another stakes victory at that. The son of Into Mischief, now a multiple stakes winner and a nice rail trip here at Monmouth. Yeah, you have to appreciate uh, what uh, the son of Into Mischief has been able to accomplish in just an eight race career, his third victory. And uh, he was coming off of a smart uh, third place effort in the grade one uh, Woody Steven. In fact, uh, Jack Christopher came back to Frank uh, form as well, arguably one of the best Best sprinters in the land. But Provocateur in a partnership with Spendthrift out of the uh, Cherokee run mare, Kayala, will be uh, pointed toward the gallant Bob at Parks uh, later this month. And uh, the future certainly looks bright. Todd Pletcher and his team doing a great job. He's been really forward. He's really never done anything wrong, right? Has been in such great form. The Hutchison at Gulfstream uh, this winter and now that stakes win at Monmouth Park as well. Looking forward to the gallant Bob. 63 caliber, another winner to celebrate from this last month since we last saw you on Wire to Wire. Victory at Indiana in the slop, the daughter of Gunrunner, she's now three for five lifetime. Yeah, and she's certainly become uh, a, a fan favorite. Of course, our CEO and founder, uh, one Michael Barons, has kind of instituted her as his uh, go-to. This three-year-old daughter of a gun runner out of the Include Mayor, class of 63. Unfortunately, uh, Include left us here over the past week. But uh, 63 caliber, Tom Amos, and again, in a partnership here with Spendthrift, she earned a career-best uh, 76 buyer speed freight. I also want to mention Provocateur, the future star stable, 4,500 plus partners involved in that uh, winter circle at Monmouth was nothing short uh, of exceptional and a big uh, tip of the cap going out to Chris Ransom, does a great job as well. Uh, handling all facets of the game here at uh, My Race Horse. So many people celebrating between those two horses. Congratulations to the owners of Provocateur and 63 Caliber. Daddy's Joy is the next winner that we're going to celebrate. And I'm going to take this backtrack for you because we're going to hear from the connections as well. Kent Sweezy just took over the training of this mare. She's a daughter of Daddy Long Leg. She has been fairly consistent overall. We're in the claiming ranks in here. No claims out of this victory, so we hold on to her. In the stable, as you see, she's going to go ahead and run them down and end up holding clear by about a length as they cross the wire in this one-mile turf event over at Monmouth Park on the 27th of August. Let's check in with our winning conditioner. Hey, checking in here, Monmouth Park with the victors. Couple winners here. Couple winners. Jose Gomes, Kent Sweezy. Jose, tell me about the trip. Great trip. You know, the last time she showed some speed, so that was the game plan originally. Try to get her out, try to get her relaxed in front. Well, a couple horses wanted to uh, take the lead from us, so we just sat and um, made one run, and she came running home. Yeah, she had a perfect trip. She didn't get claimed. Um, we're excited. She ran awesome. Did exactly what we wanted to. Uh, congrats, everybody. Have a great evening. Sarge Kent Sweezy has done such a nice job with the horses that he's been entrusted with, with my racehorse, and also one of those uh, young guys that's such a great communicator, keeping everybody up to date on what's going on. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I think the key is we, we talk about the experiential aspect of it. Yet again, we find ourselves at Monmouth Park. I also want to congratulate our partners at Slam Dunk, Nick Casado, and of course his son, uh, Ryan Casado, does a great job in management. You know, Taddy's Joy was one of the originals out of the two-year-old in training process. She now gets her earnings in beyond 100000 but you brought up the point. Sometimes these horses get relegated to a smaller stable per se, although Kent is uh, growing in size. Uh, in this particular case, he's done a wonderful job. And Jose Gomes, great to see them kind of catch up and talk about uh, the effort there for a horse that uh, certainly found a new lease on life. Nice victory there from Daddy's Joy to the next one. And I know you've been waiting for this victory from Hero Status. We've talked about this horse quite a bit on the show over the last several months, often given the work of the right. month, often given the stable spotlight designation. Hero Status, 
this was the big win that I think everybody knew he had in him, right? He knocked at the door, breaks through, and breaks through in a big way at Del Mar. Well, uh, undoubtedly, hero status in a partnership with uh, Dan Agnew, uh, trainer Mark Latt, who's had a, a great summer. In fact, put a nice stamp on it with a stakes victory uh, with Teddy Perino over the weekend at Del Mar. But uh, this would be the fifth career start, the uh, charm, but had been knocking on the door with three straight seconds uh, rolling in. A two-year-old in training purchase uh, at the OBS sale a, you know, a year and a half ago. Certainly a horse that uh, steps up here with a big number. The crowd, phenomenal. There you see Joe Moran, the West Coast Racing Manager for uh, My Racehorse manages Edge as well. And you're going to see an on-point high five here. And of course, uh, the team, so excited. 2,500 plus partners. I can assure you that we're at least 2,300 at scene. But uh, beautiful sun there over the uh, Del Mar racetrack. But uh, 90 buyer speed figure and Money Mike Smith aboard kept him out of trouble in a horse. Interesting to note that Gojo won, uh, whom he finished second to in the race prior, came back with a big upset in the shared belief, I believe it was the day prior. So a big, big sign there, a positive one at that, the day after, rather. You got one of the uh, famous Trevorisms as well. He said you can ring up the register Amen. if you have hero status. You got to love that because you know you're winning very emphatically when you get one of those lines from Trevor there at Del Mar. Congratulations to the partners of hero status for that open length victory at Del Mar. Man Among Men is the next horse to spotlight. I've kept an eye on this horse from the beginning. I remember when he first came in to Richard Mandela's barn and they always said he's going to be one of those that's just going to really grow into himself, come into his own. And he did, and Sarge, I love this, pins his ears, and he dropped down like a sports car for the last 16th of a mile. Well, and again, you got to give credit to Umberto Rispoli, who was aboard uh, for the debut. He didn't necessarily have the best of trips back uh, debuting on July 22nd, but the timing, Papa Mandela, uh, Richard Mandela, Hall of Fame trainer, has done such a wonderful job allowing this horse to kind of find his best gear. He was a Keeneland September yearling purchase in a partnership with Spendthrift out of the Galileo mare. Key to my heart, over 5,000 plus partners involved with Man Among Men. And just a kind of a fun side note here, Gary Mandela trained a horse by the name of Man Among Men back in the day okay. for uh, the late great uh, R.D. Hubbard, a horse that uh, was staked caliber. I feel confident about Man Among Men. Son of Warfront, uh, I think the uh, sky's the limit here, if there is a limitation. I think this horse will appreciate and relish the added real estate. Man Among Men, bred by Jane Lyon of Summer Wind mm. Equine. By the way, she's also the breeder of Flightline, if you had a chance to see that performance uh, at some point over the last week. I mean, I think we could talk in the entire show just about a horse like Flightline. Cer certainly could. I mean, again, it it's just such a, an uplifting experience to be able to watch a horse like uh, Flightline. And it also uh, gives us uh, a goal. Right. Uh, for example, of course, with Keelan's Dipper coming up, hefty price tag uh, for uh, fight Flightline for a million dollars as a Saratoga select. But certainly uh, the, the future and the future looks bright for Man Among Men. But uh, retrospectively on Flightline, we can all just hope. It's a good time to be a horse owner. It's a good time to be a horse fan as well. Mm -hmm. There is another filly that we wanted to spotlight today, and her name is Mo Temptation. She's an up-and-comer. She's a horse that you can still get involved in. She is a Maryland-bred daughter of Motown. And to find out more about her, we actually sent our own Maryland-bred. Gabby Gaudette had these words with Doug O'Neill. Take a look. Doug, how is Mo Temptation progressing and how close is she to a debut? You know, she's doing well and uh, like a lot of young horses, she's had a few little hiccups here and there, but she's a super talented filly. Uh, she gives her 100% uh, effort every morning exercising, so we've been taking her time and doing the right thing and you know, I'd say she's within 60 days from a race. How has she, uh, how is she mentally and physically? She's really good mentally, and again, physically, just like a lot of babies, there's a lot of just, uh, you know, start and stop, start and stop. You just got to get them over the hurdles as they uh, mature physically. But mentally, knock on wood, she's, she's uh, uh, beyond her, her age. So she's doing really well and uh, looking forward to her uh, physicals, catching up with her mentals and, and getting her uh, to the races. You trained my racehorse's first winner, and uh, we are reunited with this filly. What do you enjoy most about training for my racehorse? You know what I love about my racehorse is that uh, I can relate so much with them because it's uh, uh, it's not a lot to get in and and you're part of the game you're you're, you're part of the action and uh, uh, so I love it I love the business model and um, you know I've I've gotten to know a lot of co cool people who have jumped in on on uh, even Mo Temptation I've, I've met a lot of new people so just a great way to be part of the sport and uh, they do a wonderful job of managing it so it's uh, just a win-win all the way around. 
You're not afraid to set up second strings at big race meets across the country, even worldwide, including Dubai. Can you explain why you're always willing to take on a new challenge that many other trainers shy away from? Wow, you know, I think as you get longer in the tooth, you realize uh, the more options you have, the, the better, right? So uh, a lot of times a horse that maybe doesn't fit in California would work well in, in uh, Kentucky. That's kind of my thought process right now. And as the uh, Dubai Carnival uh, gets going early in the year, I'm always, I put in like 20, 25 horses and they usually accept maybe 10. So if you get a horse that's accepted, it's just a great opportunity. And Dubai is like, uh, uh, horse racing in Dubai is like baseball in, in the U.S. It's just revered. And so you just, you're super proud being part of a great sport there in Dubai. Thank you, Doug. Awesome. Thank you. Always positive, always up for something new. Looking forward to what we see from Mo Temptation in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, absolutely. And, and she uh, was scouted by uh, brother Dennis O'Neill uh, out of that uh, uh, mid-Atlantic sale uh, in Maryland and, you know she's been breezing uh, exceptionally well but as Doug alluded to and we've kind of seen with the Motowns Uncle Mo has been a tremendous uh, grandsire and I, I think in this particular case allowing her to find her best drive she certainly is a a picture of health uh, she's a beauty she's grown up quite a bit in just the, the interim here but uh, Doug O'Neill the perfect suit and again not a trainer that's afraid of kind of expanding uh, his horizons and this of course being the Maryland bred being Delaware certified, there could be some opportunities down the line for her to get into those uh, stakes caliber races. Looking forward to it. And as Doug said, very approachable. Definitely uh, go say hello if you're out there at the track. And we hope to see Mo Temptation out there very, very soon as she continues to prepare at San Luis Rafe. Time for our work of the month now. And we focused on this filly quite a few times. She's one of my favorites. I talk about her all the time. Going to Vegas, so determined in her races in the afternoon. We haven't seen her since her second place effort in the gamely not long ago. But what I love about her, Sarge, is true to her running style, she just puts 100% into everything. She's fast, she's determined. This is a turf work at Del Mar. Now, normally we've seen her in many works working on the training track at Santa Anita. So here she is on the grass going around the dogs and she's going to just rip around this turn before coming for home. Well, the one thing that you can appreciate this workout back on August 28th, she did uh, come back and work five eighths uh, over the main track, uh, going to Vegas, uh, a daughter of Golden Sense out of the Johannesburg hard to resist. She is coming off, as you mentioned, uh, a sharp uh, runner up effort in the grade one gamely. She's the defending champion of the John C. Maybe. Well, she's going to come back and try and take that crown. If you remember last year, she did come back in the grade one road drive as a win and you're in at the time not being a breeders cup eligible she was nominated so that fee was indeed paid but uh, she's earned seven hundred seventy nine thousand dollars to date well if she comes back into the john c maybe she's going to inch closer to that uh, million dollar mark in a partnership medallion and uh, abadanza and we'll hear from phil shelton a bit later on as we uh, get some introspectives to the Keeneland uh, September yearling sale, as yearling sale kicks off. But going to Vegas, she's on point uh, in speaking to Joe Moran, our West Coast racing manager, and hearing from Phil D'Amato, who's done a great job since taking over the training. Uh, confidence is high. It's very strong for going to Vegas, who's looking to uh, hit the jackpot at Del Mar to close it out. Let's hope so. I love the reach that you see from her out there on the turf course. She looks in fine form coming in to defend her title in the maybe. Looking forward to going to Vegas coming up this weekend. Moment of the month. How about this? We have a new trainer for the My Race Horse Stable and a man that needs no introduction. The Hall of Famer, D. Wayne Lucas, the coach, is now a trainer for My Race Horse. Hall of Famer, a four-time Kentucky Derby winner, a six-time Preakness winner, a 20-time Breeders' Cup winner. And I could listen to the coach talk all day. So I'm looking forward to these updates because whenever he opens his mouth, you learn something. Yeah, absolutely. It's like the old uh, EF Hutton commercials. Uh, obviously, when Coach D. Wayne speaks, you listen. And uh, having the opportunity to train a very pretty looking individual, a son of uh, Arrogate uh, out of the uh, Mayor Sharp Smart Stop uh, Shopping who was purchased out of the uh, recently concluded uh, Saratoga Select Sale. I know on point uh, Roderick Walkman and uh, Joe Moran, they're very excited about uh, this one. And, and 
having uh, Coach D. Wayne as part of the My Racehorse team is certainly a, a tribute in its own right. Uh, I think the fans, the partners are going to really appreciate uh, the opportunity here with such a uh, true class horseman and uh, one of the all-time greats. He's certainly a legend. We could have picked any number of races to go to to kind of relive some of the best moments of horse racing and in the Hall of Fame where D. Wayne Lucas's career. We're going to go back to the 96 Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Take a look. Just one of his many accomplishments. Lead, but here comes Acceptable trying to mow him down with a furlong to go. On the inside, it's cash deposit. It is Boston Harbor tenaciously trying to fight off Acceptable as they come down to the line. Boston Harbor digs down deep, and yes! And by the way, he's still winning big races. Secret Oath, if you needed any kind of a reminder what a year it has been with her, we're looking forward to what she can do towards the second half of this season and into the Breeders' Cup as well. And we mentioned that Arrogate Colt that he's going to train. Let's take a look. Here is a look at the son of the late great Arrogate. Out of the mare, smart shopping, a $300,000 purchase at the Phasic Tipton Saratoga sale. Nice walk to him, and you know that he is in good hands as he's going to cultivate this talent, bring him forward to the races. Yeah, I think the thing that, that stood out uh, to me most uh, is the cerebral aspect of this horse. Uh, good bone, uh, made a real nice uh, presentation. Also nice to see that Arrogate uh, unfortunately left us as early as he did in his uh, breeding career already having produced a, a grade one winner and uh, multiple stakes winners. So it's an exciting time. You have to uh, appreciate uh, what's on the horizon here. Uh, of course, the, the brilliance that we saw with Arrogate, you know, perhaps even until maybe going on Justify, but namely mm -hmm. Flightline. I mean, it was uh, Arrogate, of course, the horse that many have looked at and said, you know, it would have been nice to have him around as a racehorse for that much longer. But in that stretch of months back in 2016, for what the sire had done, the fact he's been able to kind of reproduce that uh, type of animal uh, in the breeding shed, I think uh, certainly speaks volumes. Great purchase, I, I think it was smart yeah. shopping <laughs> for just $300,000. Yeah, you mentioned his uh, mental kind of capabilities. On I've only been around a few of the Arrogate offspring so far, but mm -hmm. they seem laid back. Yeah, they seem smart in a great way, and right. you have to have the physical abilities, but especially to be ready as a young horse, you need to be able to keep it together mentally. It's a total package. Kind yeah, of I, I think if you reflect back on that Pegasus World Cup, and we had the feature on TVG in in reference uh, to that uh, after the poor break. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to see that, the introspectives, in fact, uh, we'll kind of put the word in with my racehorse to maybe bring that back. Share that story What an again. effort that was. Truly one of the all-time great efforts in that uh, uh, World Cup, Dubai World Cup, rather. We could be talking about uh, that Son of Arrogate as a spotlight very soon, but our stable spotlights this month, we have each chosen one. I'm going to spotlight the daughter of violence, and that is Stay Fabulous. She is a young one. She's two years old. She is with Steve Asmussen at Churchill Downs right now. Nice work on the 28th of August, where she went five furlongs in 59 and change. And she's also been gate schooling, just kind of going through her paces, doing everything like a true professional. Steve Asmussen doesn't really ask for a whole lot from his horses in his workouts. His patterns are different than what you'll see, especially out on the West Coast, especially with a horseman like Bob Baffert. You know, they're gonna take it easy. You're gonna get these longer, slower drills, but rest assured, he gets such a foundation into these horses and has a very high percentage of first asking. Well, and stay fabulous uh, in a partnership with uh, Bloom Racing, a $150,000 two-year-old in training purchase uh, away from uh, Luke and Bloodstock and just the OBS June sale. This is a very positive sign to see this horse uh, now up to a, a five-panel spin by violence. Uh, recently sired the winner of the grade one hopeful over the uh, weekend uh, for trainer uh, Todd Pletcher. $150,000 two-year-old in training. I think certainly looks like a bargain from this standpoint out of a Spitestown mare, Jeannie Spite. And uh, onward and upward, uh, very, very, I think the upside here is just tremendous. Yeah, here's a look at the schooling video. Just again, learning everything that she needs to learn in order to be ready for that first career start. And there's so much that goes into the gate schooling, not only just breaking from the gate, but also at times standing in the gate, walking through the gate. Not only do you want to have a horse that is ready to jump from there to really use their hindquarters to push off, but you want them to stay calm, you want them to stay focused, you want them to mm. be really paying attention in that scenario. It's not always about breaking from the gate, it's about being comfortable in that situation. Yeah, I, I think the, the real key, and you know, not to 
kind of hammer it home again in regards to a uh, flight line. But I think the idea is being able to get the horse to exhale. And we see often horses that, that tend to run around the track. They run with their head up a bit. They tend to hold their breath. They need to exhale in order to kind of get that, that extra gear. But it's, it's like anything you do in life. Mm -hmm. If you don't take a moment to uh, take a deep breath and just take it all in and then exhale, I, I think Steve Asperson, he's the perfect suit. He's done so well over the years with uh, Jeff Bloom. So it's nice to be partnered up uh, with Bloom Racing in this set. I mean, we know what he did uh, with the daughter of Midnight Loot a few years back. It's funny you say that because I just watched a really interesting feature that Richard Migliori did about the starting gate. And he right. said that, and you, you can feel this, when you're on a horse, you can really feel their energy. But when you're in the gate and you're in that kind of confined mm. space, you can feel their heartbeat. You can feel them breathing in and out mm. because you're staying so still. So all of those things are so important. And we look forward to not only Stay Fabulous, but Mo Temptation, all the other young horses, just kind of learning and getting there and making those first steps forward. Hopefully we'll see her out in competition very, very soon. Your stable spotlight this month, we're going to go to Forbidden Kingdom. Let's take a closer look at this one for the Hall of Famer, Richard Mandela. Big uh, race on the horizon for him on October 1st at Santa Anita. Yeah, I absolutely love seeing this photo here with your Hall of Fame trainer, Richard Mandela. You know, this horse has earned a, uh, a near and dear spot uh, into my heart. But, you know, we often talk about it, especially going into uh, football season with the fall, the National Football League, or whether it be even college football. This is indeed, for me, the franchise quarterback uh, of my racehorse, coming in with three victories uh, Coming back to the Santa Anita Sprint Championship, unfortunately, you know, kind of knocked off of the uh, the Derby Trail uh, when we saw him last in the Grade One Santa Anita Derby on the 9th of April. I uh, had a little bit of a, a bout uh, with colitis, but the good news is throat in good order. He had some ulceration under his soft palate. We'll talk about uh, a myectomy procedure that he did not have, but uh, potentially if things would have pushed forward. So I think that little, we'll call it a 20 second timeout, maybe a little more than that. The key for Forbidden Kingdom is year end, day after Christmas, the grade one run happy Malibu. I think that is the real target. But then again, getting uh, some grade one status. He comes back in the Santa Anita Sprint Championship. Things go well, potentially a date with the, uh, the Breeders' Cup Sprint or even the Breeders' Cup uh, Dirt Mile. Um, but Forbidden Kingdom is great to have the King back uh, on campus and, of course, uh, training forwardly in a partnership with Spendthrift. It's been a fun run thus far with the Son of American Pharaoh. Mark your calendars October 1st for that race, a win-and-you're-in event at Santa Anita. You touched on this a second ago, Sarge. Myectomy is the subject of our inside scoop today, and we're going to talk about this with reference to Search Engine, the son of Flatter. He just underwent this procedure, but what's important to note is that this is something that's actually fairly common, especially in resources. He was back jogging on the track the day after. Well, and that's just it. I, I think that they've deemed that the myectomy, it's when the uh, soft palate gets placed on top of the epiglottis rather over. So essentially it, it ends up flipping and uh, essentially it's kind of reminiscent of if you were to swallow your tongue, but general horses don't swallow their tongue, but they're not able to get their air. And horses will intermittently displace their soft palate in a race, which you talk about the breathing. It's one thing to inhale, exhale, but for horses to displace, it's, in my mind, worse than bleeding often because of the fact their air absolutely shuts off. So that was the case, for example, with Forbidden Kingdom, where he had some ulceration under the uh, soft palate, indicating that he had some displacement issue. Thankfully, the anatomy of that throat, correct enough, no surgery needed, but in regards to uh, uh, search engine, uh, 65% successful, I think it's better than that, but the good news is you don't lo lose much training time. So yeah, take a look at the jogging video because it was the 1st of September that this procedure happened. It was right there in his stall. This isn't something that is too over the top in terms of you know where they have to take him and what they have to do. The very next day, out there, comfortable, happy, little pep in his step, able to jog. And not only was he displacing, but they found that his epiglottis was a little bit flatter mm -hmm. than most horses. So that would kind of lead to this potentially happening again without the procedure. Well, right. And the clinical signs seen with the disease, the disease include exercise intolerance, gurgling, raspy noises, you know, kind of reminiscent to if someone is a bit uh, hoarse, pardon <laughs> the pun, but you mentioned flatter. Flatter being the sire yeah. of a search engine uh, to boot. But I, I think the positives are certainly there. If you watch his races, and that's the thing, as a former trainer, of course, your husband Dan could, could, of course, attest, is when you watch horses and they tend to run in spots. It's one thing early on in their career, but when they've had racing experience, 
You watch horses that do that, they, they will have the tendency to displace. But uh, I think in the case of search engine, it's going to help uh, immensely because you look back at some of the replays, even when he was performing and winning, right? He's a winner. Right. And uh, Tom Amos uh, kind of looking in to the point of saying this horse is not performing to his capacity. So having this uh, myectomy procedure, it's about four inches uh, right here in the throat latch. It's a uh, very minimal um, horses. In fact, they probably blink and wouldn't know they had it the next day. He will have a race coming up shortly. So do many of the other horses within the My Race Horse and Edge Stable. Let's take a look at our list of upcoming runners. And as we say each and every month, mark these down in pencil. You never know, races don't fill here and there. Things change, obviously, with these horses. But a lot of these races are stakes races, too. So you know that they are you know, pretty firmly on the calendar. I, I shouldn't really be playing favorites, Sarge, but I'm definitely looking forward to Straight No Chaser. My husband trains that one coming up this weekend at Del Mar. Can't wait to get him back on the racetrack. And you can see on down the list there, Del Mar, Gulfstream, Belmont, Parks, Churchill, Santa Anita. My racehorse runners will be all over the country to compete. Yeah, no doubt uh, it's going to be great to see uh, Straight No Chaser uh, back uh, in the uh, in the scheme of things. Also want to mention at uh, Kentucky Downs uh, having an opportunity uh, for uh, edge racing and some great stakes uh, with Heaven Street and trainer uh, Brendan Walsh in a partnership uh, with my good friend uh, Brent Malmstrom coming out of the Oceanside. Reports are that Heaven Street, despite being a big price, keep in mind, Brendan Walsh has won this race the last two years. Uh, going to be a big price here come Saturday at Kentucky Downs. So if you're in the nearby area, check in. Look forward to seeing you on behalf of uh, Edge. Of course, Joe Moran will be out there for the uh, Keeneland September yearling sales as well. When are you jumping on a plane? Because the sale starts in a few days. All right. It'll be uh, Thursday, and it'll be a two-week uh, tour in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. So if you're out and about uh, and you want to kind of check in on some yearlings, I'm sure we'll be uh, happy to have you piggyback along and kind of look at some of those perspectives that we see with these young horses. Yeah, it's the largest yearling sale in the world. Six books, is that Six right? Books, Six books, 4,000 horses. It's a marathon, yeah. not a sprint. Sarge will be there, as will many members of the Bloodstock team for my racehorse, as will pretty much every horseman yeah. in the country making their way to Lexington, Kentucky. Looking forward to that. We're going to have a lot of coverage right here, too, on FanDuel Racing, which was TVG2. We'll have full coverage of book one. We'll be cutting in with some highlights throughout the next couple of weeks as well. So Sarge, as I bid you adieu, good luck finding the next stars, the next spotlights, the next work of the month, the next horses we're going to be focusing on. No, absolutely. It's been tremendous. And, you know, a big thank you uh, to the partners and the horses. You know, some honorable mentions, uh, Amore with a big effort on turf for trainer Todd Pletcher, Laneway, dynamic uh, with that runner-up finish in the uh, yeah. win and you're in with the uh, the green flash and certainly the future looks bright but want to thank all of the horsemen and uh, their teams uh, for their continued hard work and, and diligence and uh, we certainly look forward to the last fraction of the year because we're, we're getting into the final quarter and uh, I have a suspicion that we're going to finish strong so let's uh, knock on wood get there but uh, looking forward to this upcoming sale and uh, what lies ahead for uh, my team my race horse and edge racing. We are going to say goodbye to Sarge Nick Hines and myself Christina Blacker but we have a series about yearling sales the full series is available on the my race horse YouTube channel but as we say goodbye we introduce you to Phil Shelton here's the first in that series Phil of TaylorMade and Medallion Racing telling you all about the yearling sales. We'll see you next month. Welcome to TaylorMade. My name is Philip Shelton. I run our Medallion Racing Partnership, which is partnered with my racehorse on Street Band. Um, we're gonna take you around the farm and show you a bunch of different stuff today. We're starting out in one of our yearling barns. This is uh, what we call yearling complex C. It's for horses that are prepping for either the phasing Tipton September sale in Lexington or the Keeneland September sale. Um, this is the barn that American Pharaoh prepped at before he went and was a famous RNA at phasing Tipton before he went on to win the Triple Crown. And here it is, the 37 year wait is over. American Pharaoh is finally the one. American Pharaoh Today we're going to kind of show you what some of these yearlings go through and yearling prep. We'll go look at some mares and then we'll end up with uh, the stallion tour. We can go see Not This Time who's on fire right now. He's the number one leading freshman crop sire by a number of winners. I had a couple of impressive winners this weekend at Delmore.
This is the, the heart of prep season. We're a couple weeks away from the September sale. So we're doing everything we can to help these yearlings look their absolute peak once they enter the sale ground. So we alternate at TaylorMade. Some days they'll go on the, on the automated walker, which is what they're doing now. Other days they'll go be hand walked in a field. And so what we'll do now is we'll stop them and they're gonna get them to go the other way. And just like a human, we wanna make sure that they're working both sides. It just takes stress and it puts it equally so that you're not overworking one side. Just below the walker, they're gonna, they're boiling flaxseed. Everything we're doing is trying to get these horses to their physical peak. Most of these horses are, they're more or less turned out 23 hours a day. They'll come in in the morning, we'll check them, make sure everybody's healthy, happy, eating good. We'll kick them back out. About 60 to 80 days prior to the sale, they'll get put on a higher protein feed. They'll start getting put on a workout program, which is similar to what they're doing now. Their schedule will change instead of being out 23 hours. They come up at seven in the morning, they get kicked back out at seven o'clock at night, so they're only out for 12 hours. And what that does, it prevents sunburn. So just like um, I'm fair skinned and I'll get sunburned, the horses are very similar. Uh, it would be the opposite. They would be, instead of dark, this beautiful bay color, they would really get lightened. It's called bleaching. I mean, it's not really a negative, like if I get sunburned, I'm in a lot of pain. These guys, it's just a cosmetic, um, thing, but it's less desirable for the sale. So everything we're doing is to help the owners achieve their maximum value. At this point, all of the yearlings, the colts go out in these small paddocks, they're individualized, and the fillies will go out together in smaller groups. The colts will get separated. They're just rough and rambunctious. They're like a group of 13 year old boys. They're just playful, but when you weigh a thousand pounds and you're playful, you know, injuries happen. There's a lot of bite marks, chewing of tails and stuff like that. The fillies are a lot better. The fillies, a lot of times for them, what you have to worry about the most is they basically get turned out in their big field and they put their nose in the grass and they don't come up until they come up in the morning. So the colts are more rambunctious. They generally are easier to keep their weight off. The fillies, you have to worry about a little bit sometimes that they can get heavy. This is a very standard way that they're gonna set the horse up. So you wanna always be able to see all four legs. So the front leg on the outside will always be out in front and then the same thing with the back leg. But here you get a good view of all four legs um, you, and you always want the legs closest to you on the outside. And this just as general horse showmanship, you always show the left side of the horse. So if you're ever not sure, like is it the left leg, the right leg, it'd be just the same way as a human, whatever their front, like the way they orient themselves is their left and then the way they orient themselves is the right. One thing we like to see with all of our yearlings in their neck is you want them to come in here and tie in so there's good depth from where their neck meets their shoulder down into their shoulder. If uh, like a less desirable trait would be if their neck kind of came in here and tied in lower on their shoulder. But you can see what we're trying to get is this filly look, looks really strong. We got a big forearm here in their muscle. We got a great strong shoulder. Same thing, a good strong hip. You can see right here in this horse's Gaskin, um, which is towards their back, but you can see that muscling. And that's something that would be a lot different 60 days ago. The muscling just wouldn't be there. You can see very classy and professional, just wants to stand there and take it easy. And that's another trait that these horses will practice every day, just standing, walking, um, all those things. So that once they get to the sale, it's old news. They're not um, uncomfortable or anything else. TaylorMade has sold over hundred grade one winners there are so many people that are so passionate about racing and about what we're doing. I think the, the biggest thing at every level is to try to show these horses get unbelievable care. They have hands on them every day to make sure that they're happy, they're healthy, they don't have any cuts, they don't have any soundness issues. And they get to come out here and they're turned out into these big lush paddocks. Everybody's happy. The reality is a lot of horses that go to the track, they just don't make it. They're not fast enough, can have issues. We do a lot with aftercare here. A portion of every horse we sell gets donated, but there are so many great organizations. And I think we could always do a better job of advocating for the care that the horses get at every level. If you go to the barns in the morning, there's nobody that loves the horse is more than the groom. The person that's in there with them every day, that's the same here. These guys are gonna know all the horses and they're gonna know what they bring and they're gonna know, you know, if, hey, it was great or it wasn't as good and everybody's invested. We're all trying to pull to that same level. Like it's a huge goal here because ultimately the more success our clients have, the more success we have.